Hi, Peter Johns here, emergency physician and vertigo enthusiast working in Ottawa, Canada. Today, April 22nd, is the 145th birthday anniversary of Professor Robert Barani. 100 years ago, Barani described the characteristic nystagmus seen in posterior canal BPBV, which is the most common and curable cause of vertigo. So you'd think by now, Barani's description would be something every medical professional would learn about and understand. But unfortunately, this is not the case. Often, when I work with a learner that I haven't taught before, I ask them about the nystagmus and BPPV, and it usually goes something like this. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm the new med student. Dr. Johns, it's so nice to work with you. I've seen all of your YouTube videos. I'm really excited. So you've seen my videos, Mr. Glockenflecken. What does a positive dix hall pike test look like? What kind of nystagmus would you see? Uh... Horizontal? Yeah, it's horizontal. It's got to be horizontal. Definitely. Mostly, definitely horizontal, right? That is sadly what everyone seems to say, but it is wrong. A positive dixal pike does not show horizontal nystagmus. Have a look at this video testing the patient's right ear. Tell me what you see. First, nothing happens for the first two seconds, and then nystagmus. Rotary towards the downward ear, but also another component. And that is Mr. Glockenflecken. Vertical? What? Vertical? The, the patient has a the brain tumor or something. Did you get a head CT? No, she didn't need a CT scan nor an MRI. She had the epimune overdone on her. And within three minutes, her symptoms of postcranial PPPV were gone. So in fact, vertical upward, rotary nystagmus towards the downward ear is classic positive dix pike test. Now... What do you see in this video testing the left ear with the dex hall pike test? See, first, when he's looking towards his downward ear, and then, towards his upward ear, something changed. What is it, Mr. Glockenflecken? Well, when he's looking down, it looks more rotary, but when he's looking up, it looks more like vertical nystagmus. Well, exactly, Mr. Glockenflecken. And that is precisely what Professor Barani wrote in his first description of the nystagmus scene in Poster Canal BPV in 1921. And today, April 22nd, is Barani's birthday. And 2021 is exactly 100 years since he published his famous description. Isn't that fantastic, Mr. Glockenflecken? Well, happy birthday, Dr. Barani, and congratulations on the 100th anniversary of describing the nystagmus of posterior canal BPPV correctly. I am sensing an element of sarcasm in your salutation, Mr. Glockenflecken, if that's your real name. Now look at this Dix Hall Pike test of the left ear. Tell me what you see. Uh, left ear down, expecting to see some nystagmus. The usual vertical... Oh, oh no, it's not, is it? What is it, Mr. Glockenflecken? But that is horizontal nystagmus. You said horizontal nystagmus oh. isn't seen in a positive Dix Hall Pike test. Calm down, man. Now, if you'd actually watched my videos, you'd know that horizontal nystagmus is not a positive dixal pike test, and that if you see it, you should suspect that they could have horizontal canal BPPV, and they would benefit from having a supine roll test performed, and if it's positive, they should have the Gafani maneuver. <laughs> now, now, this is not a time for tears. Just go watch my video on horizontal canal BPPV, and that should clear it up for you. Go on now, and close the door on the way out. But don't... Oh. And scene. Now it doesn't often go as badly as that when I teach medical students. In fact, I like teaching about vertigo, even though a lot of medical students will say that you see horizontal nystagmus during a positive dix hall pike test. If you want to learn more about the dix hall pike test and epi maneuver, click here. If you want to see a dozen or more positive dix hall pike tests, click here. If you want to learn about horizontal canal, click here. And if you want to learn more about the history of Barani and dix hall pike, click here. Thanks for watching.